222 day, we will be talking about Velo and LightNet, which also has some integrations with Visa that I have covered, and its integration with Ripple and Stellar, and how it even has the same kind of ties into SHX, and how all of them tie back into the same exact individuals that come up time and time again, as well as some very high price predictions that are actually pretty practical. And all of this comes back to the fact that Velo right now is set up to essentially act as a bank because of all of its ties that we will talk about here. One of the Velo core goals is to be the Ripple of Asia. And they are not competing, but by uniting the connections between Ripple XRP and Stellar XLM, they are working on true global financial innovation. If we look beyond the outdated Ripple versus Stellar debate, Velo leverages its technologies to empower regions with limited banking options, aiming for a borderless financial future. And all of the ties back into XLM and XRP, as well as a lot of other things, can be seen much more clearly. Follow the money map put together by XX and Utility Theory. Here, it shows the direct ties into LightNet, XLM, as well as into Velo, and the amount of indirect connections it has into the things like Ripple and XRP are not a exaggeration because of who is involved. Velo will be the king of CDFI, and I'll explain what that is. It is a combination of centralized finance and decentralized finance, which includes the best features and attributes of both. Centralized finance it is a traditional bank-enabled financial system, and DeFi is based on cryptocurrencies and smart contracts, which, because of its integration with Stellar and XLM and how that now has Sora band contracts, it is enabled right now to explode in both adoption and price. And it has a lot of adoption at the moment. This new acronym offers the same features as DeFi protocols while being centralized, which allows people to access products like decentralized exchanges, liquidity aggregators, yield farming tools, and lending protocols, which sounds a lot like what SHX is involved in. And they are indirectly connected to them as well. Here is a comment that begins to explain how connected that the LightNet group is. It was recognized by the Faster Payments Council as an alternative cross-border payment solution to SWIFT along with XRP, XLM, and USDC, which can run on XLM. And according to a paper from October of 2022 talking about CBDCs and cross-border payments, it calls out LightNet as one of the options because it connects e-wallets, crypto wallets, QR code payments, bank accounts, and credit cards into their ecosystem, which makes payments available under one roof to create a regional-based settlement hub. And there are a lot of ties in between XLM and XRP that go back to XLM being a fork of XRP. But it was replaced to make the XLM network that we now know. And the Stellar protocol was created by David Mazieres, not sure if I pronounce that right, who is the same guy who is an advisor to Velo and LightNet. Here is an example of how much of a uh, involvement that they can have just in the remittances space. Out of LightNet's 
four billion USD equivalent of remittance volume, at least 10 to 20 percent would be with Velo itself, which implies an annualized ODL of hundreds of millions of dollars and soon to be a billion, which would push it to a top five in terms of actual on-chain remittance transactions. And it's interesting that ODL is called out here because that is a term that Ripple talks about a lot, which is effectively an equivalent to just calling it XRP. Here is an article that expands more on Velo, Lightnet, and Visa. That's from November of 2020. And I have introduced it in the past, but it extends the reach of all three firms by allowing near real-time global transactions in between participating banks, money transfer operators, and other financial service providers. And here is an excellent review of how Velo and Lightnet work together and and what that partnership actually means. Lightnet is a Singapore-based company which concentrates on creating an inclusive international remittance ecosystem, particularly in Southwest Asia. They have products that include global payments, digital wallets, and multi-currency accounts. Lightnet's goal is to become the main DeFi bank and has already acquired seven licenses in Singapore, Thailand, Indonesia, and Lithuania. Its universal hub works with any type of partner, interacts with them with a single API, and removes a need for bilateral agreements, which cuts down on transaction costs and provides instant payments. Velo is Lightnet's tech partner, which means Lightnet has adopted Velo protocol as its underlying blockchain. The partnership allows Lightnet to provide all of the benefits of blockchain technology to their partners and customers without the need for their clients to directly handle or interact with Velo itself. What does this mean for Velo? Even though people won't be directly interacting with the token itself, Lightnet's adoption could indirectly increase d- demand because it is being implemented as the infrastructure of their product. Lightnet using Velo attracts more people to Lightnet because Velo has a lot of traction already. And with more people on Lightnet's network, that would lead to an increased amount of transactions as well, which would require more Velo itself and driving up demand, which would be one of the ways or is the main way that a token increases in price. Who are some of Lightnet's partners? You've got Transformate, who are a global B2B payments infrastructure as a service provider. And that partnership allows Lightnet's customers to establish virtual bank accounts in the US, Canada, UK, and EU, which provides Lightnet with instant access into all of those extremely valuable economies. And here is an interesting thing that popped up on CoinMarketCap about a Velo price prediction. It is written by whoever that is, who has put out multiple articles in the past. And although it's not written extremely well, it sounds like as if it was written by AI, it does have a lot of interesting points. And it primarily is talking about long-term price predictions that begin in 2025. And in 2025, they are talking about a lowest predicted price that would be well over Velo's previous all-time high. Here is a video from Bullockbull that explains how the technical analysis as well as the fundamentals of the project, can combine to produce 
extremely high returns on Velo, which is right now just over half a cent. So there's a lot more pressure. So I'm expecting a blow a blowout at some point. It's going to be a big impulse. Now we need to find the sort of targets where we could be headed. So for example here, this sort of line for me is like this was support if you will then we've broken down heavily so this this for me is the first sort of target we need to be looking at getting and that's that's up at 31 32 cent and we're currently trading at just under 0.0 not six wow that look like six cent but it's not wow this is a chart this this looks serious let's just have a quick look at the gains wow minimum 51x in my opinion that is wow this is what i mean this is why you gotta to listen to people on crypto twitter because you won't even look at it i've heard of it but i thought you know what i'm invested i know what i hold with the utility tokens that i hold but until you dive into them <laughs> do you realize the gains that can be have so let me just delete that so there you go that's sort that's sort of first you could take profit sir i feel like you're guaranteed 50x I really do. Um, and then obviously we've got these sort of three peaks here. So this third one obviously failed and that's where it rolled over into the bear market. So this next blue line, and look, it's up near the all-time high. Can we get up to all-time high? Absolutely. I think we can. Can we breach it? Who knows? So yeah, this is... this. If we're doing a 50x to here, what's this line doing? Nowhere. I'm going to be rotating half of my portfolio into this if we're not careful. Wow, 31,000%. Is that a 300x? But no, it's more like a 310x, right? I'm just about to fall off my chair. Wow.